How's it guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm just going to show you how to get UVs onto flip fluids. Um, it's not a very complicated setup and it's something that I've kind of just figured out and I'm just going to share it with you quick. So let's just jump in and I'll show you my setup. So we're just going to dive in and just take a look quick. So to generate the base of the fluid, I've just got a, a draw curve node and this is just to kind of draw a rough, rough shape. Um, and then I just add some noise in the Z direction just to give it a bit of breakup. I resample it to remove a bunch of the excess points and I just give quite a large smooth on this just to get a nice smooth curve. Then I use the sweep node and the sweep node can generate geometry for you from a curve. So it's automatically set to second input, uh, which will error out. So if you just jump and you set it to a round tube, you can get a round tube from your curve. I just played with the radius a bit, um, kind of bring it down. Um, this is set to none by default and you can set it to a grid and then you can get these nice round caps. And then also the, the scale along curve is great because if you have it off, uh, which is off by default, just gives you a kind of tube. And if you put that on and you just give it some breakup in this um, ramp, you can really, you know, get some nice kind of just break up of it. And then that's about it. And then to generate your UVs, there's this tab UVs and attributes, and you can just tick on compute UVs and you get off the bat really nice UVs onto on, on the geo. So if you have that off, yeah, if you have it on. So that's how I got the UVs onto the geo. And then I just subdivided it to kind of give myself a bit more, a bit of a smoother shape. Then I go and I create a points from volume node. And the only thing I did was reduce the, the point separation. And I created this output group called particles. That's for the flip simulation. And then you get these particles. Now I need to get the UVs onto the points because at the moment the UVs are on the vertex. So I need to get them onto the points. So what I do is, is I, I'll drop another quick shade over here to just show you. Um, so this is promoting the UVs from vertex to points. Um, I need to put a vertex split before that. Um, and the attribute I want to split is the UVs along the vertices, because if I, if I don't have that vertex split, you can see that we get the seam that runs all the way down the back. That's the seam that the sweep node generates. But when we promote it to points, it automatically it, it creates this, this ugly seam down the back. So if we just do this uh, vertex split, you get this, you get rid of the seam. Could have probably just promoted to points there instead of doing this, but kind of just like having it in in two nodes, you, you probably can just do it in one node. And then all I do is I just attribute transfer those UVs because um, now they're on point level and I just transfer them from here onto here using this attribute transfer and the conditions are pretty standard. So now there's UVs on these points. You can look at the spreadsheet, these points, there are UVs and on the spreadsheet got UVs on the points. Uh, next, I grab this curve from further up and I just create a point, uh, a group at the bottom of the curve, call it base. There we go. And I just copy a box onto that base group. And I'm doing this because I want to group just this bottom section of points. And I do that by just doing the bounding object, which is this guy that comes in here. And I'm doing, I'm creating a group called start. So this group here is called start. I do this so that if I change this noise over here and I give it some offset, it's this group will always be at the bottom. I, I wasn't doing that earlier and I was wondering why nothing was working. It's because this group was, was set maybe here and then I'll change the noise and it wouldn't group any points. So I just did that so that no matter, you know, how we change that noise, you know, for the look, um, It'll always have these points grouped. I then color all the points black and I give that start group a color of white. All right. This is because I want to do a growth, kind of growth um, propagation along here. And so I start by giving these points a white color and in the dock net, 
Um, I'll show you what I do. I just create like a little bit of a growth. Um, so this all this does is this just moves it into place. I just wanted to drop it down a bit because it was too high for me. All right, so if we jump into the, the dot net, I've just got, it's very, I mean, there's nothing fancy going on here. I've just got a flip solver um, with these bounds, quite you know, small, with viscosity enabled, swirly kernel, no reseeding, and that is it on the flip solver. This is uh, set to particle field, and this is an expression that just grabs the first inputs, uh, whatever is coming in the first input. So it's op input path. This just uh, says, you know, look at one level up. It's I think it's talking about this here, and it's the zero is the first input. So it's just saying grab whatever is coming into the stream. So that what that's what this does. And then I've just linked the particle separation to my points from volume. All right. Then in the SOP solver, this is where I'm doing this growth solver. Um, I'm just grabbing the this disk geo, these points, and in here, I'm just blurring. I'm just blurring the, the result. So there's the points, and I'm just blurring them a bit. Blurring CD based on proximity, uh, max point six, and blurring iteration of four. You see, you can blur it quite a lot but I'm just blurring it by four. The higher this number is, the faster it'll propagate up the curve. So I don't really want that to go super fast. And then all I'm saying is in this wrangle, I'm just saying any points value of the, of the red channel um, is greater than zero. So when I blur these points, these points get values of like, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, these are all zero and these are all one. And these are kind of like, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So anything that's above zero, so anything that's not pure black, I'm just setting it to be pure white. You can see there, boom, setting it to pure white. And then the starts again, it blurs these points and then goes, set everything to white. Then it blurs those points, sets everything to white. And it slowly just grows every frame up the curve. All right, so that's all that is. And then over here, so I'm doing that on the stream and then I'm actually just bringing this geometry into the first input here. And I'm just saying that the color equals whatever the color is coming out of this. Because I'm not reseeding, I can just use PT num because that stays the same. And then I'm just saying if it's pure white, create a group called active and set it to one. And if it's not white, create a, uh, set the group to be zero, active to be zero. So now these points are set to active and these points are not data active. And all I'm doing then is I've got a pop force with gravity in the Y and setting that to active. So now whatever is in the active group, it gets negative 9.8. If it's not an active group, it doesn't get any gravity. So that's all that is. And the viscosity is 125, density is 500. So if we have a look at that, I've got a little dop import here. You can see as this grows, it pulls, like, it's going to pull points that aren't white because that's just the viscosity is, you know, these points are all kind of stuck together with viscosity. So as these points are falling, it's kind of pulling the unactive points down. But you still get, if you look through the camera, you still kind of get the effect of it kind of being poured, which is quite, I mean, that's kind of the effect that I want. Um, and that's basically it. I'm basically just faking the pour with an already created tube uh, shape so that's all that is and then i'm just using basic meshing i'm not doing anything fancy here um, i've just linked my particle separation and i've divided it by 0 0.75 so it's it's even smaller than my particle separation just for a, a denser mesh and i have to transfer this is important you've got to in this attribute transfers you've got to put uv in here i think by default I'll just set this to default. Yeah, so it's V, vorticity, rest, and rest two. You can kind of, if you're not using any of that, I can take all those out and just do UV. Um, and then this is, this kind of is important. I found just through my tests that these values for me work well, but you can play around with these values, but I found that a high attribute sample and uh, attribute radius gave me the better results. 
you can see I'll show it. So then that's that's my results here. If I drop this to like 10, you can see it looks a bit miff. Um, yeah. So I took this to a thousand and you kind of just get these nice smooth UVs. The, this, these streaks are because in my, in the simulation, you can see that there's not really any geo there. It's, there's a, there's a gap, but because I don't have enough points and because my, I've got a lot of smoothing on, on this, um, I've put some smoothing on here and I don't really have enough particles. I'm just doing this to show you as a test. But these areas are basically the areas that don't have any, that are the kind of the, the gaps in the particles. And it's just, it's just kind of doing these kind of squashed UVs. It kind of works for us because these, these, it kind of folds, you know, it's kind of where it's, it's folding in on itself. You can see that it folds and then it folds, folds. So it's, you know, if something is folding in on itself, it's kind of going to get a bit squashed. So it, it kind of works. Obviously for production, I would, you know, bump up these values and would get a lot more particles going in here. But this is just to show you guys the setup. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.